Welcome back, everybody. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank my buddy Paul Kelly for this t-shirt. He sent me some shirts, so I'm going to be wearing them for the videos. Uh, this is a Culling Squad t-shirt, and it's part of the Venatores series. If you look up Venator, it means uh, hunter or gladiator. So I think it's uh, appropriate for uh, for the concept of the APBT. Thanks a lot, Paul. Much appreciated, brother. And uh, this video is like a continuation of the last uh, couple of videos about conditioning and and uh, it stems from a conversation I had with uh, a friend of mine, Ruben. Uh, good conditioner in his day had a lot of uh had a lot of concepts that were transferred or you could say uh commonplace among human athletes and uh the breed uh more of the more modern way to look at conditioning you know conditioning is always evolving always uh, we're always learning new stuff, you know, and what was interesting during our conversation is uh, Back in my day Which was prior to his day which his day was several years ago, too uh, I noticed during a conversation we came to the same conclusions uh, With uh, and the same understanding but a, a different way of getting to it his was more technical. He had more uh, information of the whys and what fors, you know. But uh, with conditioning, you kind of come to those same uh, points. Whether you're a learned scholar or just some regular guy, you know, if you understand the concepts of conditioning, you can get to the same point. And with me, it wasn't so much why, why things work and how they worked. And I was more interested in the results, what worked and what came out of it. But there's nothing wrong with the learning the technical uh, terms, learning, you know, it helps you. The more you understand of what's going on, uh, the more it will help you in getting to certain points in conditioning. So this one is basically uh, conditioning time, meaning, you know, length of time or distance or whatever, but mo mostly the time it takes you to condition a dog along with the uh, how much rest you give them. And, you know, one of the questions I get a lot is how much is too much? How do you know, you know? Uh, I used, did everything by sight. Sometimes it was touching the dog, you know, meaning checking his heart rate, watching his breathing. And, uh, you know, a dog will get to the point where if you've overdone it, you know, and, and let me say this first. I, I did my condition basically in three-day intervals, meaning I did the same workout for three days then either rested them and increased it or did the same workout and increased it. You know, it just depends on the dog. If they needed rest, I give them rest. Uh, if they were good, I could increase it and continue forward like that. Some people standard, this is what I do, and this is how many days rest I get, like that. You know, I, I was like that to a degree, but I wasn't adverse to changing it. If I thought they needed more rest, I'd, I'd give it to them, you know, nothing set in stone. And that was one of my problems early on is, you know, regardless of what I use, whether, whether it was a mill or hand walking or flirt pole or whatever, I had it in my mind that this is how much work the dog's going to do today. And that didn't change and that could screw a dog up. And I did until I learned the difference. So you have certain guidelines that you follow. And even in my keep, it's a guideline. It doesn't have to be followed 100%, but a lot of dogs, a lot of my dogs, 
I did follow that model because they were able to do it. So uh, if something needs to be changed, as far as I'm concerned, rest, for example, <coughs> I did that. The one thing I didn't change was the increases. Those stayed pretty much the same. If I was going to increase the road work a half a mile or a mile, I, I did that. Uh, if I thought they could go a mile and a half, I wouldn't go a mile and a half. I wouldn't increase it because that's going to come along the way anyways. That old adage, you know, doing less is more, it fits in with conditioning. So some of the ways you can tell, you know, when too much is too much and you really have to pay attention to the dog, you know, because people think a tired dog is a well-conditioned dog. That's true to a degree. But an overtired dog, a blown out dog, is not a well conditioned dog, or any athlete for that matter. So, in the process of, of doing the work, let's say I have my dog up to five miles. I'm going to do the five miles for three days. If he's not able to do that five miles, you know, uh, I back off, give him more rest. And then uh, the next time I'm going to condition them, I'm going to repeat that five miles. I'm going to go back to that five mile point. If the dog is unable to perform at a certain level, at the level that you think he should for that distance or that time, then you've probably done too much. Uh, if they're feeling tired, they need longer periods of rest. Uh even depression or listlessness you know you don't think of a dog being depressed but if they're not they don't have that same spirit you know because it plays on their mind to that fatigue you know you could say that dog is depressed but even if depression isn't a part of it listless listlessness can be just that dragging their feet and and you know again a lot of people look at that like well that's good He's very tired. I'm breaking them down to build them up. Okay, let's say you've gotten to that point. If you take him out the next day and he's not raring to go 100%, you overdid it. If he's just going through the motions, you overdid it. Because dogs will do that. And even though they see, they don't, they can't communicate to you their fatigue and they get out there and they work hard they're they're a step behind you know they're not they're not that don't have that spry movement that quick movement or that alertness in their eyes you know so and also sometimes they'll have trouble sleeping meaning they're they're kind of agitated you know restless you know a dog should be should you know especially if you have them on time to do some work rest, feed them, go to bed, like that. If they're having trouble doing that, that could be from overworking them or doing too much. You know, the, the other thing is, is the sore muscles and, and uh, you know, kind of heavy limbs or some slight injuries, you know, a torn muscle or, or uh, 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 ligament joints, you know. I mentioned this before, that's where the rub down helped me a lot, you know. Uh, if they're limping, of course, there's a problem, you know. If you got a torn pad, of course, there's a problem. Those are visual. But some of them you can't just see. It could be some swelling uh, around their joints or their muscles, you know. You might look at it and say, well, he's, he's building his muscles up. That's not necessarily it, you know. It, it could be swelling from fluid because the fluid is attacking where the, where the injury is. So during the rub down, if they flinched or winced or something like that, a certain area, and when I rub down, I rub down their joints too, even their toes, you know, you feel all their pads, you look at their gums, you, uh, you know, rub down their muscles over their eyes, ears, everything. Something's bothering them, that'll, that'll help you figure out what it is and where it's at, what part of the body it's at. So, uh... 
I'd like I like to, you know, and this is something that that maybe wasn't thought of in the past, but it's come through through science and uh, results monitoring an athlete, whether it's a heart rate, you know, or the blood count, or uh, you know the uh, the breathing, how many breaths per minute, you know, uh, an athlete is taking, including a dog. Uh, I learned that, that, you know, 70 to 80 percent workout is enough. And that includes the high intense workout, never more than 80 percent, and uh, the periods of time during the workout where they're uh, at a lower rate. Let's say you run them, like my dogs, I would run them, I'd take off fast, and they'd take off at a sprint. Then they would, they would slow down and hit and, and keep working, keep a steady pace, but at a lower rate, at a lower speed. Now, when, when you're doing road work the way I was doing it, or any, you know, if you use a vehicle, you can, you can look at the miles per hour. But most dogs, when they're running, when they're doing road work, it's an average of five to seven miles an hour. Hand walking is about three to four miles an hour. But when they're running, and you have to take into account that average because sometimes they may, may be running 10 or even 15 miles an hour. And when they slow their pace, it, it may be five or six miles an hour. So you have to take that into account. But the average is about that. That's what I noticed for my dogs anyways, you know. Uh, more towards the seven mile an hour, maybe even eight mile an hour average it's a dog like Clayton Bud, you know, who could really run, had great air. Uh, some don't get up to speed that way. Don't push yourself that hard. They just hit a steady pace and they keep it. <coughs> Those types might allow you to do longer workout, you know, longer road work, more miles. You know, same thing on a mill. Some will run it balls out and then they'll catch themselves. Uh, a dog that, that doesn't pace itself, that just goes 100 miles an hour, you might have to do sets with that type of dog. You do the workout, he runs it balls out. You stop it, take him off, walk him out, cool him down, do another set. And the thing with, with mills, what, what kind of gets some people is the time on them. You know, they're more concerned with the time. I got to get them up to a half hour. I got to get them up to two hours. I got to get them up to two and a half hours, three hours, like that. I learned not to do that because that can mislead you into thinking that your, your dog, you're increasing the work on your dog. So obviously his conditioning is increasing for the better. That's not necessarily true. Same thing with the flirt pole. For me, flirt pole was just a few minutes. That's it, because it's a high-intensity workout, gets her heart rate up, and, uh, and uh, it's a fast workout. So in my mind, they don't need that long of a workout. Some people get them up to 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. If I did a dog for 15 minutes on the flirt pole, it was because the dog wasn't chasing it like a mad dog every second. Right, it would be like a sprinter versus a, a cross country runner or long distance runner. You know, the sprinter, high intense workout, fast, short. Cross country runner, more of an endurance run, <clears throat> longer distance, kind of like that. Some of the dogs are like that too. So, when I say eighty per seventy or eighty percent, that's at. Uh, you know, like a rigorous workout. I mean, 78% heart rate. That's how I would judge it. Not, not 70, 80% where it's just a slow workout or hand walking or something like that. I didn't want to blow them out at 100% because there comes fatigue, there comes all those problems of injury, 
and listlessness, all that stuff. So there's ways to figure out, you know, what's what's 70, 80 percent of, of a workout, their heart rate or their breathing, you know. And uh, again, even calorie counting, you know, they have methods of doing that. You could probably Google it. I never did all that. I just did it by eye. But you can do uh, a heart beat rate, you know. You can either touch the carotid artery and feel the pulse or inside the, the stifle, the, the main artery there, and feel the pulse there. And it's real simple. It goes back, you watch TV or anybody you have that's in the medical field, you know, a doctor, or you go to the doctor, if you ask them, how do you check the heart rate? All they're doing is they're counting the heartbeats for 15 seconds. That's why you see them with a clock and they, or a watch, right? They take the number of heartbeats in that 15 seconds, multiply it by four. That's how many heartbeats it is per minute. So you could do the same thing with a dog, right? Or the breathing. You can count the breaths they take. You know, normal, normal dog breaths is, I think it's under 30 breaths per minute, something like that, right? The heart rate, the, uh, the, uh, Pulse again. You can you can look that up, you know. And all, uh, I didn't really use it that way. When I figured out kind of what their pulse rate is, the way I would do it is I would check them standing still, no work on them, and basically find out what it is. It's it's uh, it's uh, I forgot the numbers. Anyways, then I would take the dog, do a rigorous workout, and then count the heart rate, count the the pulse rate right so just just to throw out an easy number let's say it's it's uh, uh 80 beats per minute i don't i don't even remember the numbers but let's say it's 80 beats per minute that's at a hundred percent fatigue right so uh you know i'm looking at doing 60 or 70 or even 55 to 60 that to me would be the 70 80 percent workout rate but again like i said i just did it by eye right if you get them to the point during the workout where they're they're stumbling or they're taking a half step i would stop the workout there that's where the real heavy fatigue starts setting in and you just back off and when you put your dog up if he's so blowed out that he has to lay in his doghouse can't even come out then you've gone too far if the dog is is still has plenty left in your mind still bright-eyed and wants to work not jumping around jumping up and down and acting crazy you probably didn't do enough work then but if he's still active still you know uh, uh when you stop the workout and you walk him out within a minute or two if his breathing has stopped becoming labored then you're probably you're probably good with your conditioning you know, you don't want that real heavy breathing for a long time. You know, I've had people tell me that they've done a rigorous workout and it's been a long time and the dog still hasn't returned to normal breathing over a long period of time. That's too much. That's way too much. Because as you continue with the work, his time to recoup breathing becomes shorter and shorter because he's in better condition and you're not pushing him that hard. So, you know, again, in the past, <clears throat> and this happened with a lot of even top conditioners, you know, they felt that you had to work your dog for hours and hours. Now, if you're hand walking your dog and you can walk for several miles, 5, 10, 15 miles, you know, like some people say they do and some people have, that's not really a hard workout. But... When you hear people, you know, uh, you know, I walk my dog 10 miles a day, then I put them on the treadmill for three hours, then I flirt pull them for a half hour, and I go swimming for an hour, they, all this stuff, which, you know, uh, I heard people say, you know, I swam my dog for eight hours a day. That's way too much. And the reason I say it's way too much is because when you get past a certain point, you're not helping the dog anymore. You're hurting them. So what 
is a good time as far as a time factor goes of <laughs> of uh, a workout for a dog you know in my estimation anything over three hours you'd be pushing it and uh, of course a lot of people are gonna disagree with me <laughs> but like I said, modern science has proven, at least with humans, and uh, that that you know, for a human, a couple hours is enough. Anything more than that, now you're you're, it could be a detriment. And I wish Ruben was here because he could explain it to you what the factors are. But you guys can look it up. And that's about what 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 I determined was a good workout. And that's total workout from walkout to to emptying out to doing the workout to cooling them off doing the rub down it was about three hours at the peak so it's not near that as you as you begin your your uh conditioning you know and i have friends that that followed that same that same kind of pattern you know because I would ask them, you know, and the, these guys that are that are very good conditioners, they work in their day, you know. Because we're 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 uh, exchanging notes, right? So I ask them, how long you work your dog? Uh, you know, like when you start out, what do you do? And they'll tell me, you know, Richard, I I, I walk them, you know, I walk them a mile or two mile, three mile, I just walk them out, you know. Then I'll put them on the mill for three to five minutes, first day, first couple of days. That's it. And I do that for you know a few days in a row. Then the next week, I might bump it up to, you know, five, ten minutes, something like that. You know, by the time I get to the peak of the workout, you know, I may be doing, you know, uh, a half hour on a treadmill, maybe a half hour on an email, you know, with a few couple of miles walking out. That's their total for keep. Now, it doesn't seem like enough, but if you think about it, along with the monotony of doing the same stuff every day, every day with a dog, that's a lot of hours of work over an eight or a 12 week period, right? And if you do it wrong, then, then now you're cutting into the muscle. You're not replenishing the, the calories. You know, if you beat them up so bad, you're going to have to give them a lot of calories. Or if you're not so hard, at them, hard on them, you're giving them less calories. But you still with the less calories because of the less work <coughs> you're not killing them they don't need that many recal calories for you to replace because you're not overdoing it where if you do overdo it even if you replenish all those calories it may not be enough because now you've injured the dog and there's a there's like it's almost like a workout fatigue that they develop when you do too much time with the dog over too long a period of time which is why i stress you know you should have your dogs fit or at least i did back in the day yeah i always had them fit <clears throat> and i used to catch beef sometimes you know like when we'd school dogs or something like that mine were always in pretty good shape some people bring their race back. They thought it was unfair. Or this I just tell them, well, exercise your dog. Don't have them so heavy. What what is the point of that? I never saw the point of it. Like I mentioned in other videos, you know. So you know, for uh, you know, if you want to count the breaths on a dog, the a normal, you know, breathing dog, it's under thirty breaths per minute. That's kind of the average, you know. Uh, uh, just like. Uh, uh, the heart rate, you know, it, it varies 160 or whatever the, the numbers are. I forget, but, but it's just the concept of keeping track of all this. And you can do that. You can check the dog's heart rate standing still, under stress. Same with thing with the breathing. Normal breathing, under stress. And it just kind of gives you an idea of where your dog should be at same as it does with with uh you know walking the dog out and letting them cool down how long does it take 
Just like when you do a workout, whether it's in the beginning, middle, or the peak of the workout, how long does it take before that dog has to catch his breath, gets his second win, or blows out, or whatever it is? And that's uh, one of the reasons guys like myself, Hunter Man, and other people, you know, they stress writing everything down. Even Ruben, he writes everything down, you know. And it, it gives you, uh, you think you remember, and a lot of it you do. But if you want to be accurate from day to day, from month to month, you keep records and you can refer to them afterwards, you know. And I would guess if uh, my memory serves me, a pit bull is somewhere around 120 to 160 beats per minute, right? And that that is just from memory. And it's just an average, you know. When, when you give those averages like that, just like the, the, the breathing, 30 breaths per minute, you know, or the uh, beats per minute, 120, 160, it's kind of a range, you know. But if you're, you know, if you're way above that, let's say you're at 210, that, there's a problem, or 200. That's a problem. Even though your mind might be telling you, I'm putting good work into him, he's working hard, this and that. The heartbeat might tell you different. That's the benefit of knowing those averages, following, following those guidelines. Doesn't matter what your eye tells you sometimes, what does science tell you? You know, it's like a lot of people, you know, they may have some ailment. How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. They ain't good. Even if they feel good, there could be an underlying problem there. So the blood work helps you with that. If your blood work is right, you're good. If it's not, even though the dog appears to be okay, the blood work will tell you something is off. So, uh, you know, the, again, these are some, some things about, about conditioning and rest that aren't always talked about, you know, I'm not too technical because I'm not that learned, but it's just uh, some things that, that, you know, maybe in the back of your mind you could think about, and when you're conditioning a dog, you know, what can you do about it? You know, the, the, uh, the reason we need rest, you know, and I, I even advise my kids about this, you know, they like to work out every day, I tell them that's not good, you got to take rest days, at least one day a week, two days better. You know, that's when your muscles replenish. That's when uh, they build up. And that's when, uh, you know, they burn fat, uh, calories, right? Or fat or, or calories. And if you don't allow the body to recoup, then it gets to the point where now you're injuring the body you're not allowing it to you know you've all heard this you know you tear muscles a little bit when you work out you know those tears need to be repaired they're not bad the stress on your body is not bad it's just how much is too much and the rest allows the your body to recover from those strenuous workouts so just be cognizant and if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, doing less is better than doing more. So feel free to comment. Thanks for all your support. And uh, more videos coming up. Thank you.